Benvenuto nella familia de Jesu Cristo. Welcome. And praise the Lord, saints of the Most High God. It's Brother G, and this is the Copper for Christ channel, where we take the, we shine the light of Jesus Christ of Nazareth into a world that continues to get darker and darker by the minute. And we can take y'all, God can take y'all, as he took me, from boon life to a glorious life in Jesus Christ. This is our little garden here, our humble little garden, where we use all of our fresh herbs and tomatoes that we grow for our restaurant because our first sponsor is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Son of God. And secondly, this channel and ministry is sponsored by Gaetano's New York Kitchen. If y'all are in the Atlanta area, go check us out. One of the best meals you've ever had in your entire life. I guarantee you that. Bless. This is the final video, video four of my testimony called Goon Life to Glorious Life. And basically it's going to be a walk since I was saved. So when I last left y'all, I was talking about the amazing experience I had when the Lord Jesus Christ saved me revealed to me who he was, that he was real, and just downloaded all this love, just emotions, knowledge, everything. I mean, I was a weeping mess at the end of that. I knew God was real, and I kept hearing, I have to be a mouthpiece for him. You got to be my mouthpiece. So immediately, now I didn't grow up in the church. I didn't know nothing about it. Before we do that, though, let's uh, do a little bit of scripture because I always like to open these testimony videos with a little bit of scripture that we use as a prayer for uh, a covering and a blessing over the video. So we're going to go to uh, Isaiah 6, chapter 6 and verse 7. Okay, so Isaiah 6 and 7. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips and thine iniquity is taken away and thy sin is purged. That's what happens when you have an encounter with God and he saves you and completely transforms you. So, um, as I was saying, I kept hearing the Lord tell me, you have to be a mouthpiece for me. So immediately, I didn't know what to do. I, haven't, I wasn't brought up in the church. I was never a Christian or anything like that. So I immediately feel, okay, I got to become a pastor. This is what I got to do. So that's, that, that was my goal and my vision. Now, the funny thing that happened that morning, because it started, the, the, the encounter started at night. And by the time it was done, it was light outside. Birds were chirping. It was just, it, it was crazy. My son ends up coming into my office, and he was very young at that time. Now he's 16 at that time. This is what, 2013. So he was like uh, six, seven years old, something like that. And out of the mouth of babes, he goes, Dad, when are we going to go to church? Now, <laughs> that's just insane. That like would not happen. But this boy comes in my office and tells me, Dad, ask me, Dad, when are we going to go to church? I said, son, we're going to go this week. We're going to check out the church at the end of the block, and we're going to keep moving until we find one that we fit in at. And that's exactly what we did. So it so happened to be a Methodist church, right? I didn't care about denominations, none of that. I was hungry for God. I never read the Bible, nothing. I knew Jesus was real, and I was on fire. So we go to the church, and uh, it was before, you know, one of the Sunday morning meetings or shows and a uh, ton of people were there the I met the pastor I didn't even realize he was the pastor at first I thought he was just some nice guy that was there you know so then before I know it there uh, he's up there and he's preaching so make a long story short I got close to this guy and uh, really wanted to know all the answers you know I had all these questions and he had some answers. There's a lot of stuff that, like, in the Bible, he, as I was discovering things, he would try to shun me away from. 
like the Nephilim, Genesis 6, 4, things like that. It's like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> this is the word of God. Why are you telling me parts of, like, just things didn't add up, okay? Uh, it was a uh, run-of-the-mill, like, Sunday church. A lot of old people were there. Uh, not that most churches are full of old people, but this was a church that was mostly uh, well-to-do white older people that went to this church, okay? Nothing wrong with that, but within the first four years, there was four different pastors, okay, that I was there, um, which was kind of curious, but that's because they had their own issues and stuff going on there. So the second guy that came, he's the one that really helped me on my uh, walk to become a pastor. Now, the funny thing was... The first thing they tell me was, okay, you got to go to seminary school. Okay, well, there's conditions to go to seminary school. One has to have a bachelor's degree. Now, I had done the college thing, as if you listen to my last testimony, you, you'll know that I actually got into medical school. I was in med school for two years, and I left because of the mafia. The things I was doing, I opened up a restaurant in 2005, my lifestyle kept me away from becoming a doctor. However, with the GED, I went and got into community college and got an associate's degree in science and then continued on and made it to that. But I did not get an actual bachelor's degree because of the pre-med programs, however it worked out. So anyway, I had to take myself back to school, which I did. I got my bachelor's degree in cognitive science, or cognitive studies, I think it is. So. Then I get into seminary. All these hoops I'm having to go through, and I'm like, this just it didn't feel right. Now, once I got into seminary, which was in Rochester, New York, I realized the Holy Spirit wasn't there within two weeks. So all this time, all this effort, and then on top of it, they gave me what was called a mentor. Nothing wrong with being discipled into the faith and, you know, being shown the proper way to behave. Because, I mean, we're new creatures, but, you know, sometimes the body has to catch up to the spirit. <laughs> and uh, we need to be put in check, and that goes throughout all of our walks. You know, we do need to be accountable to, to other people. So uh, this mentor was a female pastor. Okay, I'll just leave that there for now. Okay. Uh, she was retiring. She really didn't give a damn about me, or uh, my hunger, or anything. Pretty much was left alone. And I told her, I said, you know, I'm not really getting anywhere with you. Like, I, I'm just going to start street preaching. And, like, that was like a four-letter word to her. Like, really going out in the street and preaching is, is, is shunned, looked down upon. You know, like the church, they would do, the church, this Methodist church, they would try to do things in the community but it was all very corporate and, you know, they did uh, missions. They would go on missions to, um, I believe it was Zimbabwe once a year or Uganda. Well, I think it was, actually, no, it was Uganda. It was Uganda. And for four years, I faithfully uh, did the cooking for those things. I, I made sure that, you know, the events, tickets were sold, people ate and everything like that. Because as my trade, I, you know, I, by trade, I am a chef. A person's got to have a nine to five, no matter what kind of life they're leading, or they got to show that they have one at least. And, uh, you know, being a restaurateur, that's, that's what I did. So, uh, but things were not adding up. Like my walk, my hunger for God, I was, it wasn't getting fed at that church. And like I said, they went through four pastors in four years. And there wasn't any, like, deliverance going on, uh, crazy testimonies of people. Like, it just, it, it was a very, like, Orthodox Methodist church. And, you know, with one breath, they would, you know, condemn the Catholic heresy, because it is heresy. And then in their corporate prayers, they would pledge allegiance to the Catholic Church. That was actually written in some of their big prayers for certain events and things like that. You know, following all the uh, uh, pagan holidays like Christmas and Thanksgiving and 
just Halloween, all of that stuff. Also, during that time period that I was there, I lost my mother uh, a year into it, 2015. I lost my father in 2016. So the, those were the hardest parts of my life. And there were some very good people in that church. And they helped me through it a lot, including the pastors. Now, once I got to the fourth one, I was pretty much uh, done with, with going there because I needed more. At this point, I was street preaching. The Lord was leading me to go to methadone clinics mainly and do a lot of uh, street evangelism out there. And, um, you know, sometimes people would recognize me from my old life. There was a woman one time talk, came up to me talking about, oh, how many bodies did you chop up this week? And I'm trying to spread the gospel, and she's talking nonsense like that. And honestly, it worked because I ended up packing up and leaving. You know, it, 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 it got to me like, oh, man, who's going to want to hear the word of God from somebody like me? But let me tell you something. People are being raised up, men and women of God are being raised up now in this very hour that do not have the suit and tie uh, tapered look because that ain't working. God is actually calling his children. Okay, he really is. And there's going to be power. There is power. It's in little pockets. It's not seen. And well, we'll, we'll, we'll get to all that at, at a later uh, at a later date. So when they got to the fourth guy that was the pastor there, I, I really had checked out. I wasn't going to stay there anymore. Uh, I was doing my own thing, but I, I didn't know what to do. I was leaderless. I didn't know what I should be doing. You know what I mean? I just, other than street preaching and doing that, which was great because I would just open up the Bible and start reading. Wherever the Lord led me to pick up, open up, I would open, start preaching, reading, and then the Holy Spirit would give me a word and people would come. And it was always a good experience, you know. One of the things I got to do, which I ran from for months, the projects that I ran in Buffalo, the Lord was telling me, you got to go back there and you got to evangelize there which for months I ran from, but I finally did, and it was amazing when I did. It really was. And I felt great about it because I had brought darkness and death to that place for so long working for the devil that now I went there with the Holy Spirit and God really showed me what he can do. And that's really where I saw the power of God a lot was when I would start preaching out in public. Now that was for a season, you know, and God will lead people to do certain things in their walk to, to, to teach them and groom them how the Most High wants them to be. So in my travels, I come across this little Minji Cartucci on YouTube, right? Uh, So-called street preacher who was rebuking some fake pastor and I was disillusioned with the church that I was at and I was like, the guy sounded good. One of the things I do remember was when I watched him was... If this guy was not a man of God, he's definitely a warlock. Definitely. Hands down, just the mannerisms, the way he looked, acted, all that stuff. Like, this guy's into weird stuff if he's perpetrating. Now, who I'm talking about here? <laughs> who am I talking about? I'm talking about little Walfred Carlson, Wally the Warlock. Yes, 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 yes. Unfortunately, you get a part to play in this, Wally. I'm so tired of you. Anyway, so I see this video. It looked good. The guy sounded good. He sounded like he was from the streets. I was like, you know what? This, this looked good to me. So I reached out and it took a few months, right? And finally get in contact and uh, it seemed very organic. I do believe at one time those people's motives were pure. They got corrupted. And, uh, you know, I've spoken hours about that. And I'm not going to get into that anymore. One thing that I did not like, though, I did not appreciate about even being in the church at all. And I'm not talking about that ministry. I'm talking about when I was, I am talking about that ministry, but not only that. When I was at the, uh, the Methodist church, I felt like a, a, a gorilla in the zoo because it was like, oh, come look at our, uh, our, our uh, gorilla mobster, you know, watch him dance, 
You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what it felt like. I remember there was a lady, an older lady there, who pretty much had uh, run out of road with everybody. Like, everybody was tired of her antics. They, they, they knew her game. They were just, they were done helping her, okay? Well, here comes me, and she needed a place to stay for a few days. She's an older lady, okay? It, sure, I give her, a, I let her stay at my house for a couple days. And then I remember there was some event or something on a, I think on a Sunday or something, and she didn't show up to it. And there was a running joke because she was known to be a, like a troublemaker and get on people's nerves, which she did. But I overheard, and people were talking, oh, uh, Gaetano made her disappear. That's why she's not, like, like seriously, like, the, and, I mean, I know it's, it, it's not really funny. It's really not because of where I actually came from. And now, you know, I'm being used like that. And the Minji Cartucci, Wally did the same thing. You know, he, uh, he made a, a, a deliverance posted, which I gave the okay to, a deliverance of mine, um, you know, and would always use me on his calls to let people know he's got somebody that was a mafia guy in his ministry, in his cult. At a certain point, a person gets tired of that. They get very tired of that being used as a prop for these people because that's what it is, you know. And there's a lot of things, you know, one thing that I, 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 I realized was that the church itself, you know, I'm thinking, okay, I'm coming out of the mafia, right? But at least we were honest. We had integrity. We were what we were, but we made no qualms about it. So I come into this church and I'm expecting people to actually be what they're supposed to be, saved individuals. Not so. Not so. Not everybody, but a good percentage. But at the same time, there's also been some very amazing people. You know, uh, I met my wife from packing up. See, because what I did, I literally packed up my life in New York. I sold my house, coming down to Atlanta, not even knowing really, because I, I, I got the, I rented a home, sight unseen, sight unseen, not even knowing where I was going to go, really, driving down here from New York, because I really was living that, like I really believed in that with all my heart, and, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. Do everything you do unto the Lord, but just don't get upset and hurt when people use and abuse you. And then they want to turn around and say, you're slandering their name. No, you're telling the truth. When it's not slander, retards, when it's the truth, okay? And it's not slander when it's somebody's experience and testimony warning people about a wolf, okay? It's not. When there's a wolf, the sheep need to be known. Need need to be known that this is a wolf. But see, let's go to a scripture real quick. Let's go to uh, Matthew seven, uh, twenty-two and twenty-three. I just want to read this because I know that there's going to be uh, little uh, worshippers of Wally that are going to try to attack me. So just hear this from the Word of God. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done money, many wonderful works, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye worker of iniquity. So yeah, you know, just because somebody does a deliverance prayer on you, you think there's some great man or woman of God and they're doing all this and that. Just know this, that Judas Iscariot, the one, the rat that betrayed Jesus, he also cast out devils. He also performed miracles. All those things don't mean a damn thing in God's eyes. If a person is not surrendered to the Lord, resting in him, okay, and really is content, because we are not to want, as new creatures in Christ, we're not to want for anything. If we're in a bad situation, we're to give thanks of that because God's showing us something. He's teaching us a lesson. There could be a huge blessing he's trying to give us, 
But because we are the way we are and we still need to be cleaned up, we have to go through certain things. Okay? So just know that if a person is not content within themselves to want for nothing in the Lord, all the things they do don't mean anything. That's what the Muslims do. It's a works-based thing where they think, if I do this, if I do that. Even the Freemasons do these things. They open up children's hospitals and things like that. The Shriners, which is a sect of Freemasonry. The most satanic devil worshippers there are open hospitals for children to look good. They don't give a damn about people. you got to realize where you're living in. Okay, so... Um, that was that. Um, I want to say this too. I remember there was a deliverance because self-deliverance, the Lord will deliver a person too uh, on his own. There was uh, the very first sermon I, well, actually it was the second sermon I put on YouTube back in 2018. It was the first one I made public called the Red Sea Capitalism. It's still on this channel now. Um, when I was preparing my notes and uh, getting ready to, to preach the message. I was in my basement in New York, and uh, I had a bar that was built, and that's where I would do some of the messages sometimes. Out of nowhere, the Lord literally like seized me up, yoked me up, I fell to the floor, I curled around the bar, and I was gagging, and just, I mean, it was, it was insane, the deliverance that he gave me, just off the cuff. <laughs> And I didn't even expect it, you know. Um, it, it was amazing. And deliverance is a thing that a person has to go through. It's, it's not just a one and done. You know, there's, there's multiple deliverances. And you don't always need somebody to perform it on you. It, it's a good thing to do that as long as they're doing it right, being led by the Holy Spirit, you know. Um, but self-deliverance uh, is, is real too. And sometimes God will just, he'll see it fit. And we'll deliver a person just like that. Um, I, I want to talk about kind of some miracles God has actually done for me, you know. And because this actually seems like it went quicker than I thought it would, this part of my testimony here. So for the past couple of years, like I've stated and as I've shown, I've, I've, I've been off camera, you know. And I've been chomping at the bit because of the things I've been seeing for the past couple years. But I have not been allowed because the Lord has not allowed me to do anything. I've had to stay in a cave with him and get ready, trained up. And now is the time for me to come out and do full-time ministry, full-time business, everything. Now is the time. So... Um, you know, just as Paul, Paul's conversion, when Paul was stopped on Damascus and then he received his sight by uh, Ananias and uh, all of that stuff that happened when he received the sight back, people tend to think that, you know, oh, he just went out right away. No, he didn't. It was a 10 year, 10 year hold that God had on him from blinding him on Damascus, him receiving his sight. And then going out on his first missionary trip took 10 years. So I say that to say this, because if you are a person, a, a man or a woman called to do ministry, make sure you're doing it on God's timeline. And I'm telling you this from experience, because if you do it on your timeline, you're going to derail. You're going to derail and God is going to show you, stop doing that right now. You got more to learn because I did that off the jump. I thought, okay, I got to become a pastor and I got to go to seminary. And then I kept running into all these roadblocks and getting led into cults that posed as ministries and then actually finding good people out there. Yes, some from YouTube. There are four ministers uh, that, that, that run ministry, have churches, all of that, that you know, I haven't even spoken to in, in, in two, three years. And you know what? It doesn't matter because they are actual brothers. I could pick up the phone right now and it'll be like nothing. When somebody is trying to, to take control of your time and run you, those are street tactics, you know? 
And I gave a lot of grace to somebody, more than I should have, because I was trying to be holy. I was trying to give the benefit of the doubt when I saw a lot of red flags and looked over stuff and didn't even bring it up. But the smallest infraction, some people like to just, and not even, a, it's a perceived infraction. It's not even a real one. That's how crazy some people are. So you have to know who you're dealing with. Okay, because there are good people out there that are not e-begging prostitutes for money. Okay, every man needs to work with his hands and do something. So what did I do? I opened up a restaurant, a catering service. I'm actually literally feeding people. I have five-star reviews across the board. Check me out. It's a growing business, <laughs> but I can't, can't mess with my food. Cannot mess with my food. And I say that to say this. A person has to work. Paul was a tent maker. He made tents. Jesus was a carpenter. He made furniture. You know what I'm saying? Do something with your lives. Because you cannot just... And you can't say, oh, God's calling me full-time. God's calling me full-time. And guess what? I still run a business and I put 80 hours plus, I don't even know how many hours I put into it, six days a week. And I have time to do this. And, I, and, and God willing, I will have two, two messages out a week for y'all. And that'll be moving forward. Uh, the first thing we got to do is I got to get 20, I think it's like 20 old sermons from 2018 re-uploaded uh, and edited. Because I got to edit uh, any remnant of the cult out of it visually and whatnot which is not a hard thing to do, but I wasn't even able to do that. God wouldn't even allow me to do that on this time off because I had to get in the cave with him. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. If you're being called to ministry, why in the first place do you even want to jump into doing that? Do you know God holds you twice as responsible than somebody who's just a regular saved individual? Because you're teaching people. You're, you know what I'm saying? You are spiritually responsible for people if he's led a man to pastor. You know, these are high, hard callings to be a teacher because there's a lot of crazy doctrines out there. There's a lot of things that the Lord has shown me that I cannot wait to show y'all. And I, I really can't wait. And we'll just wait for that. But one, I want to end this now. I want not right this second, but we're going to wrap it up. I'm going to put my old man glasses on here and uh, we're going to go through this here. So I, I, I want to, uh, oh, this is something I wanted to talk about when I was uh, still in the world, you know, um, moving a lot of uh, cocaine, like for, for, for uh, recreation, I guess you could say what I would do. You know, I, I would hang out with a lot of women and stuff like that. A lot of different, you know, a lot, a lot of different people. And the devil had me so messed up back then that I actually thought that I was Satan. I really did because no interaction with me was good. Like if a person crossed my path, they'd be messed up. They, they would. And that was just because of my energy at the time, what I was doing, you know. I, 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 I was putting more blow up these women's no You know what I'm saying? Like, now the Holy Spirit has given me power to deliver through Jesus Christ people who are in bondage, and it's amazing. So what I'm saying is, store that power up, get in the cave with God, and when you're ready to do what you're supposed to be doing for the Lord, because, see, I don't want to get into preaching here because we are the body of Christ. Christians and followers, I don't even like that name because of the connotation. Followers of Jesus Christ should not all look the same. They should not all act the same. Because if we're the body, we're, we're, there, there's eyeballs, there's hands, there's feet. Somebody's got to be the a-hole. You know what I'm saying? Like, real talk. Like, just get in a cave with God for yourself and let him lead you. That's it. I do want to testify of a few miracles that the Lord has um, done for me. That, uh, well, oh, okay, this is a good one here. When I, when I was um, selling my house in New York and I was waiting for it to close and uh, 
everything like that. Financially, I was never in a t more terrible spot in my life. While I was waiting for the house to close and move down to Atlanta, before I got my big bag of money, <laughs> uh, they cut my gas off. Real talk. How many pastors are going to tell you that? They did. But you know what? God's even greater. God is even greater because even though they did that, and I mean, they came to the outside, they with the wrench, and they cut that joint off, put a lock on it, it was done. The gas still worked. I was there for like another, I think, week and a half, two weeks, something like that. Had hot water, hot showers, was able to kick the gas on for the stove. Uh, it was Buffalo, so in July, it could still snow, so it could get cold. I left in May. Actually, no, I didn't leave in May. I sold the house in May. I left in July. But yeah, that is a true testimony. That's an actual miracle God did for me. Another one, um, back in, I think it was 2019, I had come down with, uh, the devil was trying to take my life, like he has done many times, tried to do many times, um, and gave me diabetes. My blood sugar was at like 486. Like, they couldn't believe it when they saw it. They were like, oh, you're going to... You could stroke out, have a heart attack. Oh, you got to reject these curses. I don't care who's telling you what doctor tells you. So what? Reject it. It's just, there's power in words. Jesus teaches us this. There's power in words. Every word that is said is spirit. And the English language is a language of spells. So us inadvertently, we're spell casting and we don't even know it. We don't even mean to. But we still do it because of the language that we speak. So uh, they wanted to put me on insulin and uh, all this crazy stuff. Uh, metformin, guess what? I beat it. I didn't beat it. The Lord beat it. Through prayer, fasting, and just rejecting what the doctor said. Now, I'm not telling people to not take medications if they need. Every case is different. A person's faith level comes into account. Because if you believe God will work miracles for you, excuse me, he will. I've seen it firsthand. I'm telling you, he does. He is a miracle working God. He's amazing. So that's a little thing. And I'm, to this day, I'm free and clear. My blood sugar is good. It's gravy, you know? So that's another thing. Um, let's see. Yeah, you know what? We'll just leave it at that. So none of the assignments or wiles of the devil have been able to work. So now... I represent Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and he has made me a mouthpiece for him, as he said he would. And I can't wait to actually get going on this channel, Couple for Christ, because uh, there's a lot of messages. I can't wait to actually start preaching for y'all, okay? Uh, if y'all you, need to reach out to me, uh, I'll have the email at the bottom of the screen. You can reach out uh, if you need anything. Um... I will make sure you're for real, you know, because there's crazy people out there. Uh, another thing, too, that I want to do, and we'll get this going as, as everything grows, um, I want to do a Bible study every single morning. So there'll be a number to call in, and we'll do a little Bible study every single morning. It'll be early because I do have to open up the restaurant by 12. So we'll probably do it like 7 in the morning. Uh, then once a week, I'd like to do a prayer line. For more serious matters and really, and we'll, that'll be probably 10 after 10 p.m. Anyway, because that's when I close. So listen, guys, uh, that's it for now. This is uh, Brother G signing off. And I'm telling y'all, y'all can go from goon life to glorious life. I pray the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Bless and keep y'all. Until next time. Bless.